Thank you so much for tuning in once again to the PALS TV Experience Podcast, where we discuss positivity, appreciation, love, and support. Before we get started, I just want to remind you all to join our community at sfsumarketing.com slash wearepals. And don't forget to like our Facebook page and be sure to follow us on our Instagram at wearepals. On today's episode of the Pals TV Experience Podcast, I'll be featuring aspiring filmmaker Diani Borjas. Me and Diani, we first met at CSM And she was actually an actress for two of my student films that I've created a few years ago. And on top of that, she was the assistant director and producer of my recently made film, The ADHD Cycle. She did such an amazing job and I love it. With that being said, let's put our hands together for Diani Borjas. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Hey, oh my gosh. I just want to say like, you know, thank you so much for coming, Diani. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. I feel like truly blessed to be on this um, platform. I think it's very important what you're doing. You're spreading um, support in so many areas and I hope it grows and expands and I'm here anytime you need me. I'll be, I will be back. I will be back for sure. <laughs> Yay. Stay tuned for more Diani. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good, though. I mean, as good as I can be with everything going on. (laughs) Happy, healthy. Awesome. So I guess for today, we're going to start off with a casual conversation. So I guess we're going to start off with the topic of film. What I wanted to ask was, you know, in terms of film, what particular industry or um, role are you mainly interested in? Um, for me, it's directing, but I'm also looking towards acting as well. I'm very in both of those areas as well. I like also um, ADing a lot too, assistant directing. Both of those areas or being in that area of directing is very fun for me. Um, yeah, I mean, in all, when it comes to film, I feel like it's good to be well-rounded in all aspects of film, and that takes a lot of time and a lot of growth. So I'm open to growth and seeing how I grow from there, and I'm very happy. Yes. Thank you so much, Diani, for sharing, you know, that's a pretty good, you know, answer. And I really like, you know, when you explain yourself, it's like you already know the plan that you want to go for. And I really admire that about you. It's like you already, it's like you are like very passionate and it's like you already know what you want to do next. So with regards to that, I really admire you for that. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. And I I feel like that's a great, um, those are great areas for people who are starting out in film to explore. Definitely. With that being said, I guess the next question that I wanted to ask was, so what are some of your favorite films and are there any particular ones that inspire your um, career goals or aspirations? Let us know. Um, One of the first films that I started um, exploring film was Beetlejuice. Um, That's just like Halloween staple first of all it's a Halloween staple but I really started looking at the film first as you know oh this is a cool movie and then I started to ask the questions how did that make how did they make that scene how did they get the creator to look that way how did they how did they film at all how did they do this I started looking beyond what I was just seeing you know and I think that's when I started saying, okay, I'm gonna become a film major. I'm gonna explore and see if I'm interested in this. And I, sure enough, I took a film 100 class at CSM that we both have taken with David Latterman. And I was just, I fell in love. I knew, I already knew that this was it for me. So that was really exciting. And then On the Waterfront is a very serious film for me. I think the drama exploring the cinematography, um, the characters and how they're so relatable especially today that film is so relatable it's um a great way or a great way to examine film in a very serious and different aspect of filmmaking there you go sorry and then of course um any Fritz Lang film you know Dial M for Murder or M for Murder and um, Metropolis all those films are big on um film innovative that was like the French wave so it was amazing to see a different culture a different form of filmmaking, a different way of directing. Um, I think it was very interesting. So yes, those are different films that have inspired me in my career. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And I'm assuming that's not even all of them. I'm sure there's like some more out there too. Yes, 
Oh my God. And like that, likewise, likewise that like for future aspirations, it just kind of pushes you to sort of bend the rules of filmmaking, you know, and explore different ways of filming and presenting different cultures and perspectives. Like film is always growing and everlasting, you know? Definitely. I remember like with the, with the, um, with the films you mentioned, especially on the waterfront, I remember like watching those like in the class we had together. I think it was, yeah, it was in David, it was in Professor Latterman's class. I actually remember watching it with you. So I was like, gosh, that one, it was pretty good. I definitely have to agree with you there. I love that one a lot. Like, right, was, right. <laughs> Beetlejuice was one of my like favorite childhood films. I love Beetlejuice. It's like, oh my gosh, it's so like entertaining for me. Like I used to watch it as a kid growing up. Honestly, that sandworm like used to terrify me like yeah. a lot. Oh my gosh, that thing used to terrify me. Oh my gosh, Daniel, focus. Sorry. <laughs> awesome. Great. Perfect. Anyways, um, I guess the following question I wanted to ask was, I remember the production that you made back in spring 2019. I think it was called um, Nightmare, right? It was called Nightmare? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So uh, with that said, what I wanted to ask was, what inspired you to um, create Nightmare? What inspired me to create Nightmare is just to kind of, I mean, just for a basic um, overview of the film, it's uh, nightmares are a reflection of your life, your um, internal fears. And oftentimes I think we just think of them or just, you know, go to sleep and wake up and you're like, wow, I had a crazy nightmare. But we don't really think back, you know, I had this nightmare about, you know, something chasing me and I keep like failing or falling like for me that tells me like my fear is a f like the fear of failure and you know that's kind of what the nightmare was I was just kind of I kept trying to run away you know from the fear of failing the people that I care about the fear of failing any form of growth or accomplishment like all of that is sort of incentivizes incent incentivizes <laughs> incentivizes um how we approach and look at life I think it's a it's all a reflection of how uh, how we struggle. I think and it's a very basic overview. That's kind of what the film, in a sense, is about. It's looking beyond a lot of what we internalize and what we don't show. And I think, in a sense, a nightmare is just a peek through that. And I think it's really important to speak about. Oh my gosh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You know. You know, thank you so much for like, you know, also like providing us some more context with the um, Nightmare film, because that's actually what I was going to ask like in the next question, but I think you already touched on like majority of the points on that one. But um, I guess with regards to the Nightmare film, I guess just one final question that I wanted to ask was, so in your Nightmare film, like, could you give an overview of what, like what particularly happens in there? So the film sort of starts off and of course there's still like working elements to cleaning it up obviously I'm creating a final project, but the film in itself is a reflection of just someone sleeping in their bed and having a nightmare. But as we're seeing that person go through the emotions and expressions with little um, talking, it's basically a silent film that I was inspired by your film, actually, one of your films. And it's basically um, just someone going through the nightmare and the the steps that they're going through, the shuffling, the scary moments, the waking up, all of that. It's all expressing how you're actually feeling. And when you wake up, it's that realization of what does this mean? What did I just go through? It doesn't make sense, but in a sense, it makes sense. That's weird to me. Like you're, you're, you're not all there. You're like, why was that there? Why did that happen? But at the same time, it happens so you can recognize something that's going on in your day-to-day -day life. And sometimes people don't think about that. And I think that's what I was saying or adding to the last answer was just, you need to sometimes not you need to, but sometimes we need to reflect on what that nightmare means. You know, thank you so much for like, you know, providing more context, you know, with the um, the nightmare film. I'm actually really happy to hear that, you know, you're still working on it some more. And I really cannot wait to see like what other um, elements you add to it. So like, I'm pretty excited for that. Thank you. Um, I feel like I think that's the biggest you're your own critic you know so oftentimes when you have a final project or it's done it's not essentially done there's so much you can add or change to and I think that's part of it you're always changing and adding to things it's it's crazy <laughs> definitely definitely I'll let you know when it's done though <laughs> definitely. 
So with that being said, I'm assuming that a lot of the film projects that you have made um, or want to create um, directly revolve around your own personal experiences. Um, I was wondering if you could share um, any other projects you've worked on before or want to make in the future, maybe elaborate on how, um, how those um, projects reflect your personal experiences. Right. So a lot of, I've done some films acting wise, but I've also tried to be as involved when I step into a project as any other. Some films that I've been involved in is A Short Trip to the Hospital, um, directed by Eddie, and ADHD Psycho Series, directed by you, <laughs> and Faith. Oh my God, I forgot your silent film. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh my God, I gotta put your si silent film in there. And Faith, these are all films that um, project growth and love and support in their own individual ways within each character. So for example, um, faith is challenging yourself and whether you can love someone when they don't love you back. And it's all about the struggles with religion and approaching these situations step by step. And I think that's very important. I think oftentimes, especially at a younger age, we tend to rush into love and we overlook the details and the support and the people that we bring around us. Um, ADHD, ADHD film is basically, it's like supporting, you know, people who struggle with it. Oftentimes it's overlooked and people are like, oh, that person's just not crazy or that person's just annoying or they're struggling with something. And we tend to just, you know, toss aside or look away, especially at mental, like health issues on all forms. We tend to overlook that and people that are struggling with that. And I think that's a good support and um, love for a topic that's overlooked a lot and misunderstood as well. Um, some of the films I worked on have related to my personal experiences because I can see myself in almost, I every single time I jump onto a project, I tend to ask for the script or people are like, hey, you want to look at the script? That's always hap That always happens in a film. And I think oftentimes when people fall in love with the project or a film, Set that they want to be on it's because they fall in love with the characters and the story itself they see themselves in the script in the characters and almost every single film i was like that's a story that has meaning behind it that has love that has support that has reflections on mental illness that has reflections on grief that has bigger topics that we are afraid to look into through a different perspective you can talk about love in so many different ways and project it in so many different ways on a film set or a film project in itself. And I think that's why um, the films like these are the ones that I've chosen to be on, I will always look for in a script. I will always look for these main topics that are important for many people who are young and who are old that transcend um, age and gender and all colors and skins and cultures and walks of life. I think that's important. You know, thank you so much for like, you know, elaborating on, you know, the connection between, you know, film and your own personal experiences. I really love how like, you know, you talk about how like those connect and then also reflect, you know, like your own like personal, like, you know, perspectives, especially towards life. And I feel like, you know, for that reason, film is a great medium to like express yourself. That's why I really love the power of film for that reason. Yes, yeah. of, course, of course, of course, of course. And like, Men and plus, I remember like you mentioned like topics around like you know how films could you know uh reflect like you know how we could offer love and support to each other, which was actually the next topic I wanted to talk about. You know, I mean, shifting gears, you know, into topics around love and support, what I wanted to ask was, you know, from your own personal experiences, how have they um defined your own perceptions around love and support? Um, I feel like everyone walks a different path in life. They go, some people go through greater or smaller struggles. Some people don't go to struggles at all. But within myself, I always, every step I take or every project I influence myself by, um, anything I do, I always make sure that I'm surrounded by the right people. As I've grown older, I've known how to get rid of the toxicity. And sometimes it takes a while to check yourself on whether this is a good support or this is good love you're being offered, whether it's from yourself or from others around you. And who you bring around you, that defines the love and support you kind of will get. 
and also how you treat yourself in the same process. I think that's a big thing. Um, a lot of it's checks and balances. It's asking the right people. It's asking um, yourself, is this right? Oftentimes I like to journal. That's a great way of self-love in a sense. You're checking in with yourself. You're constantly making sure, hey, listen, this is, what's happened. this is what happened today. Something small I did for myself, something big I did for myself, something I did for someone else. These are different ways you can support and love yourself. And you can approach that with everything you do. Like being on a set before we all just kind of, on different sets, it's very different, but I was on a one set where we all listened to music and that was a great like support or therapy before we jumped into a very like high intensity and high tension and anger into this film that we were about to do because it, so it was surrounded by anger for this one scene. And so we all had to take a brief moment <laughs> because it was a long day. And I think those are big and important things that you can do to kind of help you and help others. So yes. Pretty good, you know, really great answers. It's like, you know, I mean, not only are the like the answers like, you know, I really like how the answers, they're very straight to the point, yet it's like, they're so straight to the point, yet they like convey a lot about like, you know, true life and real life, you know? I really love like, you know, the answers that you provide. So I'd say like, you know, it's really great. And it's like, you know, your stories are super inspiring to, to hear, like, you know, I really love it. Thank you. Welcome. With that topic in mind, you know, at times like these, I feel that it's important that we are able to spread love and support towards each other. Um, in what ways do you think people can spread love and support, especially at times like right now? It starts with yourself. Um, Self-confidence um, is a big thing and self-love is a big thing. Um, I think how you go about your day-to-day -day and supporting other people. Um, simply by stating a compliment, like where, where I work, I'm constantly surrounded by people and it's early in the morning. Sometimes if people aren't feeling well, and let's say I'm trying to give them a coffee because I work at a cafe, um, I'm always like, you look great today. Or I love your necklace. I love how you look today. I hope you have a good day at work. Like small things like that to love and support a complete stranger changes their whole mood in the rest of the day. Small actions like that, um, transcend. That's what I'm saying. And in, in doing so, making somebody smile, you feel good. Like you start to smile, you start to feel happy. Creating that atmosphere of positivity and as cheesy and as annoying as it can be, because you know, upbeat people sometimes you're like, ah, that's too much energy. <laughs> it could be, you know, I've learned to appreciate that more, especially in the times that we're in, you know. And yes, I think it's important to support people in many different aspects whether it's helping a friend with the film or a podcast or helping helping um your friend who is on this journey to move or um let's say going to therapy for yourself um supporting other people in a therapy group things like that are very beneficial and show love <laughs> perfect oh my gosh that's a really great answer really great answer Really love that so much. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. So now from a filmmaker's perspective, okay? Um, so I will say film is a great way to spread messages about love and support. What I wanted to ask was, in what ways can we do this in film? In what ways do any of your films express love and support? Um, film is a great way to, film is a great way to express anything, but specifically when it comes to love and support, I, it definitely comes from an individual or internal perspective, you know, um, everybody, like I said, projects support and love in many different and various ways. And I think it starts with, you know, your understanding of what love and support is and how you grow up in an environment of that love and support. Every culture, every religion, every ethnicity or race does things very differently. And that is a different way in a positive manner of growth and sharing that love. And I think that's important specifically when it comes to my films. Um, I always show my characters in distress. <laughs> At first they're in distress and then when they're faced with their struggles, they have to approach it in a certain manner how they approach that love and support through a certain character. Like I have a film that's coming up called 72. And this person um, struggles with grief, struggles with grief and struggles with 
losing a loved one and that person he she has to constantly excuse me he has to constantly look at how he's going to overcome his internal obstacles his mental health and how he looks at other people and looks at the person that he's left behind and the past haunts him and it's overcoming the trust issues creating that support around him looking at himself through a mirror and saying okay so this is what i'm going through a realization of how to over overcome the struggle and at the end of the film this person um recognizes at, at its last moments what love is and what support is and it's the person that's been with them their entire life so it's really it's really a, a sappy one <laughs> really tear-jerk but it's but it's good in a sense I think sometimes you have to be put in that shell shock position to be like to wake up and see oh this is what's important this is what love this is what support is and it comes from that and some especially now what's going on I think um people are in a place where they're looking at the world and they're thinking about what's beneficial to them, what's love and what's support, what is needed for them, that growth. Well, what I got to say is, you know, right now it's a special, it's a, it's a stressful time, especially, you know, for filmmakers, aspiring filmmakers since COVID-19 is happening. And like, because of this, it's like, it's like way harder to find jobs, you know, Previously, many productions got shut down, and it seems that COVID-19 actually hinders with our ability to access resources. So thereby, I believe that, you know, aspiring filmmakers should not give up on their dream. In fact, like, you know, since, like, you know, the film, it's actually a team effort, especially, like, all of us, especially, like, you know, as a crew, we need to support each other and spread the love during these times. Right. Exactly. That's very, very important. Um, I think with COVID going on, like you said, it's very restricting for a lot of filmmakers. Even myself, I, I've kind of felt lost and sort of stagnant, like stuck in a position where I can't like grow or <laughs> digress. I don't know whatever's happening or, just, you know, um, I think, but in a sense, if you look at it on a lighter note, it gives us time to really um, utilize what what support is and the people around us, how we can connect better and create different um, and create and encourage filmmakers to navigate this obstacle that we're going through. It's showing us how we can approach film and film in a certain or a different way. Now, I, from what I understand, a lot of filmmakers, it's stop and go, stop and go film, having really tight knit um, filmmaking sets. And I think that's really cool because it also creates a very intense atmosphere in the sense that you become bonded just in a film set alone you're bonded with the people around you to become your family but also um it just creates that growth even more it's like creating a sort of like that family environment you have to stick with these people for some time until you're done with the film so i think that's important i think how you approach a very tense and high stressed environment is really important as well and i think how we approach these obstacles will also extend and um, create growth in the film industry because uh, we don't know how film is going to change in the future because of this. Now we might take better precautions in how we A, get equipment, B, get people to work on sets, create the safety for other people. Sometimes we don't even think about how we touch all the same objects and clothing, all the things that we use and stuff like that all that's important so i guess like the final thing that i want to ask is do you have any you know takeaways on either love and or support um like i said before to talk about all the stuff that we have talk about all the topics that we have talked about today um who you surround yourself will show how you support and grow and love and support other people around you. I think it's, like I said, it all starts with yourself. And I think um, that's a big step, even if it's a day-to-day, -day, hey, I bought myself coffee today. I went for a walk today. I worked out today, or I just laid down and slept for the rest of the day and ate cake. Like those are small ways to boost yourself in your own way of you being happy. That's your own love and support. And that positivity that you create, that you feel happy from, you can push on to others and or you can support other people in different ways of let's say going to therapy or doing a podcast doing a film set 
going on a walk supporting someone's live concert like something on a on like on a youtube like that's all cool stuff to do and support people in different ways so i just want to say like you know thank you so much diani for you know you know coming over and then you know sharing your story you know i know that this conversation that we have was super in depth but the stories that like you shared are very relevant and important at this time you know I just want all of you to know that, you know, Diani is actually one of my favorite people to work with. Like, literally, I've always reached out to Diani because it's like, I know Diani's the one. It's like, I really know. It's like, dude, seeing her on the sets, it's like she's so organized. And it's like she, it's like she is so organized. It's like she really knows, like, how to get things done. She's very consistent. And it's like, you know, I really appreciate all of her help on this. Thank you. Thank you so much. And likewise, it's so amazing to work with you and work with We Are Pals. Um, all this support and positivity and appreciation and love is important, especially right now. And I think it's good all around to support your peers or people who are complete strangers. It's a great way to navigate life through a forum, which is interactive. And I think that's cool. So, so before we go, the final thing that I wanted to ask was, um, do you have any upcoming projects of yours that you're wanting to promote right now? Or actually, in terms of film opportunities, how would you want folks to reach out to you? Um, they can easily uh, email me if they want to reach out to me. It's uh, borjasdiani at gmail.com, which I will give to Daniel and you can probably link down below or so on and so forth. I also have uh, an Instagram where I shoot a lot of photography and I'm on film sets, so that's a great way. And and, and uh, he will put that down below as well. Um, currently, I am doing a podcast with Kennedy, who was the previous um, interviewer before. It's called Tuesday Tea. Our main platform is YouTube, and we're trying to get on Spotify and have our own website. We will keep you posted on that. And I appreciate all your support. And thank you to anybody who's watching. Awesome. Awesome. Great, great. Well, this was a very informative session with Diani Borjas. Like, you know, I really enjoyed our conversation and I really wish you the best of luck on all of your films. Um, all I'm going to say is, Diani, do not forget me once you move to Hollywood. Well, do <laughs> not forget me once you're famous, okay? You better not forget me. Do you promise? Never. I will never forget you, Daniel. You're an awesome coworker and friend and I appreciate you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, you know, this was a very fun session. Fortunately, we're almost running out of time. So what I just want to say is thank you all, my fellow pals, for tuning in. This is your host, your fellow pal, Daniel Bandian, signing off for the day. Bye-bye, you all. Take care.